I was challenged by some of the viewers uh, to make a uh, paddle breaker without uh, any welding. Uh, I did it in the past, but the uh, the paddle breaker was not as strong as I would have liked it to be. So I ch challenged myself to make a uh, make another one, and this one uh, is really good. Uh, the base of it is made with uh, one by one uh, square tubing. That's about uh, one eighth thick. I say the bottom because the pole of it is going to be uh, inserted, and it's three quarter by three quarter. Uh, I seen on the internet uh, some gentlemen or some guys uh, cutting the pipe to make it round at the bottom, and I thought uh, I could include that in my uh, my little project, and it would still be all attached in one piece. So I started by cutting uh, the the pipe. Uh, not right through, but uh, on three sides. I've used two size two size for the uh, cutting wheel. This one's the smallest, so I can uh, uh, do a cut that would go right right through it without making a, a long cut, just a short one. So I kept on going. I just removed the uh, the black marking I left on the, on the pipe. At, the, at this point, it was not too complicated. I just needed to remove the uh, the black marking. Uh, I just took my time. Uh, I didn't want to go past the lines and, and such. Uh, to, to do the curb, uh, a smaller blade or uh, a worn out blade works best for this. And uh, just by taking your time to, to remove the, uh, the material. Uh, now I use the butane torch. Uh, this was really helpful, just to warm warm up the uh, the material, and uh, it would be easier to bend and and take the shape of the corner. So once the uh, metal got red or cherry, I use the sledgehammer just to uh, massage it in place. Then I moved on to the uh, the plate that would hold the bottom and to the side. I just scored the the plate about halfway, um, maybe not even halfway, just so it would be um, easier to to bend it later. Then to attach it, I just uh, punctured a couple holes, and there the bottom hole is really important where you're gonna put it because later on there's gonna be a pin that's gonna go right through it. So. You'll see that uh, a little bit la later. So I made uh, a hole exactly the same size as a carriage bolt, and I used carriage bolt because I wanted to uh, uh, to protrude the least amount on the on the tool since I, I'm not using any uh, welding. So the uh, the carriage bolt has a square uh, piece at the head, and uh, m my thinking is uh, just file a square out of the uh, the round piece and it was surprisingly enough it was easy to do and it didn't take that much time I think like uh, five minutes per per hole so I was uh, pretty happy with the result I just uh, basically uh, hammered in uh, deeper where it, the shoulder hit the uh, the plate and then uh, it was time to Use my calibrated uh, arm to torque those bolts in place after that. So those carriage bolts once installed, they, uh, they basically look like a big rivet. So I like the look of them. And just put a nut and... Uh, Tighten them in place. So once the back uh, of the plate was secured to my my uh, my bar, I just need to fold both sides against uh, the bar. Uh, again, I used the uh, the torch to help me fold it. Um, it was it was a little bit of uh, some work because the plate was quite thick. And I was glad I actually uh, scored those uh, that plate in. It. 
So I just confirmed the thickness of the uh, the plate there is uh, one eighth of an inch. So that's why it's a little bit hard to uh, uh, massage it in place. So a little bit of heat is really helpful. Uh, I left the uh, the plate a little bit longer at the bottom, so I can uh, bend bend it against the uh, uh, the bottom piece. Uh, drilling the hole at the bottom corner is really important. It gives the uh, the effect of a round edge instead of a, a corner. Um, it's gonna prevent from tearing in the corner. And then uh, drill, then put some carriage bolt to fasten the uh, the plate to to the bottom part. Okay. I like that design. Uh, the carriage bolt uh, makes it so much uh, cleaner. So once the bottom plate was fastened to the bottom piece, it was just a matter of cleaning the uh, the extra material. Uh, the cutting went right to uh, to the edge, so I kept my rounded rounded corner, so that would uh, prevent from tearing. Um, now I came back at the bottom and uh, with the uh, small smaller blade so I can do a, a round edge. I left a, a little bit of material so I can bend it around and uh, that again would help um, hold the piece so it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't break. And uh, the, uh, the heat would really help. So you can see the massaging of the metal um, right in the against the one by one. I am very happy with the result. The bent over plate will give the uh, the tool much uh, support. And now I'm just uh, removing the uh, excess material that's not needed for this project. Make it a little bit more uh, cleaner. So now I'm just cutting the excess of uh, that plate, creating room for uh, eventually putting my mechanical pivot point. Um, now I'm just uh, removing the excess of, uh, of that bolt and later on it's going to be riveted. So this is the emplacement where my pivot point is going to be, uh, me mechanically. So now I'm just starting the build of that, uh, that part. So I took two plates. Started with a round circle and then I uh, I filed it oval. So I know there's a different way to link mechanically two pieces together, but for me was the easiest one is uh, file it and cut it. Since I didn't use the uh, the welder, it was a little bit a uh, little bit more challenging. But at the end, it, it worked well. The shaping of that bushing was uh, done with the the grinder at first, and then I went in and do the final touching with the files. It took a little bit of time, but uh, the end result is I'm pretty happy with it. So off camera, I finished the touch up so that both of them would fit in inside each other. So now I'm at the point I'm creating the fulcrum or the pivot point or the lever point, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, one side's going to have uh, threads put in and the other one's side's going to be similar but no threads, just a bolt that's going to go right through it so it's going to be a bushing basically. The only reason that went through my mind when I did this is uh, uh, one less uh, nut and threads that's shown at the end of, uh, of a piece just to make it a little bit cleaner. Earlier I talked about the location of the bolt that's holding the back plate. Uh, this is why 
um, because where I'm gonna put the uh, the bar or the pin it's the uh, the resting point where it's gonna be supported uh, the pivot so it has to be closest to the top of the bar at the bottom if it makes any sense so now I'm just uh, cleaning the end uh, I didn't know what size I wanted my pry bar to be and then I decided to measure my old ones and this is where I ended up doing uh, after that I'm just cutting the uh, the tip so I can have a uh, uh, a nail puller basically and now I'm just riveting the uh, the end of those bolts so they wouldn't come off so now I'm just gonna be cutting some uh, some rough stock to make some bushings uh, spacers for my mechanical link the pivot point that we're gonna see in a few seconds so earlier I had my fulcrum uh, temporary installed but now I'm just uh, tighten it in place so now I'm gonna be uh, installing the uh, mechanically link uh, mechanics that's gonna be uh, putting the force on on a piece of wood equally so it's basically just a bolt a bushing that's formed and uh, the two plates will pivot at the same time tighten in place and uh, that's it and then uh, just removing the uh, the excess of material and riv riveting the uh, the end of that bolt so it wouldn't come off So I have tendency to make a lot of projects and and uh, one by one tubing uh, is pretty useful so I decided to cut the tool and just utilize the length I just needed and um, I have a three quarter by three quarter pipe or a square tube that I could use in this one and uh, into my other tools I made in the past so and this way if I ever decide to mail it to somebody I can actually do it so as you can see the piece goes right in there uh, I drill it right through the two the two pieces put a bolt and there it goes and the threads I made at the beginning of this was uh, only to remove all the uh, the loose in the pipe with my son uh, we washed it with acetone I put a plate at the bottom the white plate is is not part of the tool It's only there for support so it would sit flat in the, uh, the oven and we uh, did that as a father and son project we just uh, used some powder coating My son thought fire red would be a, a great color for uh, for this, so there he is shooting the, the powder. So we had the oven ready for us, so there it went for 15 or 20 minutes. And we just sat there and watched it go. It was pretty cool to, to see the, uh, the color change. If you're new to my channel, just look me up. There's some uh, other, uh, I think, good videos that could uh, create a lot of inspiration. And I have a few other paddle breakers that I've done in the past. Uh, even one that has a, a set of bearings on it, which I'm pretty stoked because it works really good. So there you have it. 
a power breaker without uh, welding. Well, this is it. If you're happy with this, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you got any other ideas for me to improve this tool, let me know also in the comments. If you're new to this uh, channel, uh, I suggest to subscribe. Sometimes I have some good videos and uh, it'll be uh, pretty sad if you miss it. Okay, cheers. <laughs>